Hello and welcome to This Week in Bobcat Athletics. I'm Vice President of Athletics, Craig McPhail. And I gotta tell you, we had a great weekend last weekend. If you didn't get to see Dunk Madness, wow, you missed a great opportunity to meet our men's and women's basketball teams. You also got an unbelievable opportunity where it was senior day for men's and women's soccer and our Bobcats didn't disappoint. Our women's team won 5-1 and our men's team well, they have a history of waiting near the end to capitalize on great m moments, and we did just that. Folks, we start the winter with basketball as we conclude our fall with soccer and volleyball. It's been a great start to the 2015-2016 year. I'm really excited with great expectations for our basketball program, so I'm hoping that I'll get to see you come by our gym and take a part in it. See what we've done, Take a look at the enhancements. Come see this room. I'll cut on a movie or a show, and we'll watch it and talk about how you can become a great part of Bobcat Athletics. In the meantime, we've got a great show for you today. We're going to talk to a couple of friends of mine. We're going to recap the week, and we're going to show you exactly how special Lees McCray Athletics is, and want you to be a part of it. Stay tuned, folks. Welcome back to This Week in Bobcat Athletics. I'm Sports Information Director Chris Parker here with sophomore Tom Dealey of the men's soccer team. Tom, big win in the quarterfinals last night. Talk about the team's play. Yeah, um, a massive win for us and it's going to send us into um, the semi-final line with some of the great confidence. Um, obviously we played them um, on Saturday as well, so it's always tough playing um, a team back to back. And scoring early was big, um, unfortunately got pegged back straight away. Um, which wasn't ideal, um, but it just shows our character um, that we've demonstrated throughout the year so far to again um, went after going behind and scoring late, which um, we've done a lot lately. As you mentioned, uh, you guys did play Erskine on Saturday, turn around and play yeah. again last night on Tuesday. What was the biggest challenge of playing the same team over? Because they probably saw how you guys were going to operate mm. offensively, and the weather really didn't help either. Yeah, it's, it's always tough. Obviously, we beat them in um, overtime 2 1, and after that, um, both coaching teams would have gone back and you know it's uh, you know double guessing each other and how, how are they going to come out again and what are they going to do different uh, what are we going to do different um, so the biggest challenge is basically just who, who can do it again could we do it again um, beating them twice or could they figure out a way to beat us and again both games were tight um, and it's fantastic that we could come up um, on top both times. And it seems like teams, well, they haven't been able to beat you guys lately. You've won mm. seven straight. What has just, what's been going well for the team during the stretch? Mm. I mean, obviously we've had guys firing. I mean, um, we all know Jacob Copeland at the moment. I mean, five game winning goals. Um, and we've had guys that are able to score. Nathan's been um, getting loads of assists. Our keepers, we've been getting shout out after shout out. Mm. Um, and it's just that winning mentality. Once once you win one or two games straight, um, you just you just get used to it and you expect it. We expect the late goal. I, I never had a doubt that we wouldn't get it mm. yesterday. So it's um, almost knowing it's going to happen and believing and um, we have the guys that are able to do it for us. Speaking of clean sheets, uh, I mean offensively you guys have been unbelievable lately. Mm. Gus and Tyler have been playing lights out. I think they went over 400 minutes without letting up a goal. Yeah. Um, can you talk about the team's defense, which starts with James and Marv and your goalie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we emphasized at the start of the year. We worked on it a lot, um, you know, defending from the front with myself, um, Cooper, Paul, whoever's um, up there and working really hard as a team. And then it's nice um, to have the keepers at the back who, you know, on occasions they do make those big saves. Tyler's um, made a couple for us. And just the confidence, once you, when you're not conceding the confidence, um, obviously, uh, goes up in the team and then you know one goal is enough to win a game as we've shown um, a lot lately. So, yeah. And speaking of one goal, one goal that sticks out, I'm pretty sure you've heard about it, is your bicycle kick against Belmont Abbey. Yeah. I mean that, that was a little bit while ago but it's a highlight reel. Can you kind of talk us through that play and what it felt like to actually connect and score yeah. on it? I mean uh, obviously I think I picked the ball up in the middle of the pitch and sent it wide to Nath um, and he's obviously skinned the guy down the right, um, come across and put a good ball in and I don't know, in the moment, you know, you just see it come in. Obviously, I've overran it a little bit, so just kind of reacted to it. And when, it act, when you actually connect, you're like, I got it, and then turn around and see it's gone in the goal. Obviously, it's, it's a great moment. Um, and, yeah, I couldn't believe it when it went in. It was a good moment. Yeah. And you guys had a lot of good moments last year. You made it to the finals against Pfeiffer. Yeah. It's almost deja vu again. You guys have to play limestone in the semis mm -hmm. and more than likely would play Pfeiffer in the finals should both teams advance. Mm -hmm. What's the team's mindset in playing a tough team like Limestone? 
I mean, we're definitely confident that they're arguably our biggest rivals um, in the mm. conference anyway. But after, like we've talked about, winning seven games straight, um, there's no better time for us to be playing these teams like Limestone or Fifa right now. And Limestone will be, they'll, they'll be nervous, they'll know mm. that they're in for a game. Mm -hmm. um, and with the character in the team at the moment, we're, we're ready for it. And yeah, I, I'm confident going into it. All right, last question for you. Saturday, you guys honored five seniors. Uh, I mean, you're a sophomore here. What have those five guys meant to you as a player, not only on the field, but off the field in your yeah, two I years Yeah, I mean, they're, they're guys, you know, that will always stay with me. Now, j has been a fantastic captain, um, had a great season, um, and off the pitch, great guy. Um, same with Matt. He's just sort of been ticking away in the middle for us this year mm -hmm. and that. And then Gus is, he's a team player. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he'll be the one who will be, you know, offering to do this and offering to do that. Kev is the joker of the team, maybe. All right. uh, so I'm um, great to have around and Coobs just loves scoring goals at the moment and you got to love someone who's scoring. So, yeah, yeah it's been, I'm going to miss them all. Um, but they've all had fantastic careers here um, and we'll be sad to see them go. All right, yeah. Tom, thanks for your time. Good no, luck on Friday. The Bobcats will be playing the Saints at 4 p.m. in Misenheimer in the Conference Carolina semifinals. And we'll be back shortly with This Week in Bobcat Athletics. Welcome back to This Week in Bobcat Athletics. I'm Justin Perlo. I'm a student athlete here at Lees McRae College on the cycling team. And today, I'm here with Daniel Smee, assistant men's soccer coach. Daniel, thanks for joining me today. No problem. And uh, so last night, we just talked a little bit with Tom Dealey, but a uh, big win last night for you guys in the quarterfinals against um, uh, Erskine, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like Thomas said, we, we played them twice in, in the space of three days. It's always going to be hard. I mean. Tom mentioned the coaches went back and sort of double-guessed each other and what we're going to do here, what we're going to do there to mm -hmm. change it up. I mean, we basically just went in and said, let's just, let's just play our game, you know. Mm -hmm. we, we think we're a good team. We know we're a good team. Um, so we went back. We, we made one change to the 11 from the last game um, just to kind of freshen it up more than anything else. And, and in the end, it worked out for us. The game was tight. We knew it was going to be. And at this point, our, our motto was simply survive mm -hmm. in advance. You know, we're, we're in the knockout stage. You lose one game, you're done, you go home. Mm -hmm. So survive in advance, and uh, luckily we managed to, to come from behind and show, show a lot of character, and um, it, was a, it was a huge win for us, and we're looking forward to yeah. this weekend. There was definitely a lot of character on that field. I yeah. was there uh, watching, commentating as well, so I saw a lot of great plays. What are some of the maybe highlights you took from that game as a, as a coach? Yeah, like well, we, well yet again, we, we went down. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we went up to start, and we, we thought we were... Well, a little we bit of back be, and forth. Yeah, yeah. We, we thought we were going to go up and cut, sort of maybe maybe cl close the game out quite mm -hmm. not easily but maybe comfortably and, and Erskine had other ideas so the compliments to them mm -hmm. they came back they went up and we showed like like we said a lot of character to yeah. come back um, and, and if it's tied sort of late in the game we, we do have a lot of confidence that we're going to get a late goal because we've done it so many times throughout mm -hmm. the season so as the game sort of went on went on went on we started to press and we, we did have the confidence on the bench that we, we actually said at, at one point, it's time, it's Cooper time, you know. We, <laughs> we, we put J, uh, Jacob into the game and he came in and he got the goal for us as he has so many times this season. So Copeland putting in another game winner yeah. that makes uh, five for him on the season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's kind of been crazy so far what he's doing and, and uh, hopefully he can continue it and, mm -hmm. and the team can continue with what they're doing and we, we want to keep playing, you know. We want to mm -hmm. get that conference ring if we can. Mm, um, very, but, but it is one game at a time. It is, yeah. It's very impressive. Uh, impressive all around. Another impressive stat is you guys have won seven in a row now. So, yeah. um, you know, this is seven in a row. And also you've won seven of eight in October. Mm -hmm. So this month really doing well for you guys. Maybe what's something that you guys have done differently? Or is uh, it just, just it, coming I don't together? Know. It really isn't anything we've done differently, I don't mm -hmm. think. I mean, when we when we seen this, when myself and Coach Wall seen the schedule at the start of the year, we knew September was going to be a tough start. Yeah. Um, we finished September two and four, and we, we said we have to go seven and one um, if we want to finish mm -hmm. the season well, you know. So, sorry, four and six we were in September, so we we, we have to finish seven and one um, if we want to have the record that we've aimed for at the start of the season. We we were confident that we could do it with the schedule and with with the sort of players we had coming into the the the, the tail end of the season, and it's turned out really well for us. The one game we did lose was in double overtime as well, mm -hmm. so it's a game we, we could have maybe got something right. from also, and we could have ended 8-0, but we're, we're delighted to be 7-1, and one, um, going into the conference semi-final in a, in a sort of a hot streak, and we want to just continue mm -hmm. on, like I say, it's, it's, this is why we're here, this is why yeah. we do the job, this is why the boys play the game, um, for the games that matter, and the, 
the get the big wins, you know. Mm, you know, that's just setting your expectations and, uh, and meeting those goals. So, yeah. uh, that's very impressive on that. Also, you mentioned the semifinals coming up this Friday. That's against Limestone. So this is a repeat of last year, actually, in yeah. the uh, semifinals. Lee's McRae versus Limestone. Um, you know, what are some adjustments you guys might be making maybe from last year to this year to yeah. face this team? Well, well, last year in the conference semi-final, we actually beat them 1-0, mm -hmm. and, and it was a, a, an overtime game. Uh, obviously, what meant myself and Coach Wall went on the staff at the time, but we've watched the tape. Um, it was an even game, mm -hmm. um, and we managed to get the goal in overtime. We played them earlier in the season. We obviously got a bit of a hammering, to be mm -hmm. honest. It, on, the, on the score sheet, at least, it looks like a bad one, but... In all honesty, the game, they, they did, I think they did deserve to beat us that day. I don't think they were four goals, four goals better than us. Um, the only thing we, we, will, we will say to the boys is continue the streak we've been going on, keep playing the way we've been playing, and let's try and eliminate those mistakes that we had in the last game against Limestone. I think yeah. if we do that, it will be another close game. We have no doubt about that, but I think um, we're all very confident that we can get a good result going into, hopefully going into Sunday as well. I mean, if they play like they have the past couple games, I. I, I'd be confident too, definitely. Yeah, I mean, they, they are a very good team. Yeah. They're a very good team. They, they know that. We know that. The, the whole the whole of the nation knows that. Really, they're, they're a so. ranked team. Um, so if they turn up, we turn up. It'll be an even game. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we can just go one better than them and, and get that result we need. And uh, so also. Uh, a little bit on the players here. The all-conference teams are actually going to be announced on Friday. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you feel about Lise McRae's representation in, in the all-conference? Uh, uh, we, we should be represented quite well mm -hmm. in, in the three teams. Um, we have a lot of good players on the team. Um, we did, like I said earlier, we did start the season a little slow. The stats don't back up the amount of good players we have. I yeah. think if anyone has watched our games or played against us, we'll get a lot of players in the in, in the all-conference teams and. I'm sure we'll, we'll be very well represented. Well, looking forward to that announcement. Also looking forward to the game on Friday. Me too. So it's going to be uh, exciting to watch the Bobcats out there yeah. versus Limestone. So best of luck to you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thanks for talking with me today. No and stay tuned for more of This Week in Bobcat Athletics. to this week in Bobcat Athletics. We're going to touch on what's happened in the past and kind of what's coming up here uh, this week in Lees McCray Athletics. As you heard uh, Mr. McPhail talk about Dunk Mountain Madness on Friday. Great crowd showing up. Uh, both teams put on an exhibition from three-point range, half-court shots, a little bit of a scrimmage. Uh, speaking of, the men's basketball team is going to host Christopher Newport on Saturday in an exhibition here at Williams Gymnasium. Tip time is approximately 4.30. Uh, as you've seen, we've talked to Coach Smee and Tom Dealey of the men's soccer team. Uh, they beat Erskine in overtime on senior day 2-1, to one, and then they beat Erskine yesterday uh, three to two in the Conference Carolinas quarterfinals, and as you've heard, they'll be playing Limestone on Friday, 4 p.m., and that is going to be in Misenheimer, North Carolina, on the campus of Pfeiffer. Uh, should the Bobcats win, they will play Sunday against the winner uh, of Pfeiffer and Mount Olive. Um, on the volleyball side of things, they split last weekend. They took care of business against Converse in a dominating three to one win. Turn around and play tough against Limestone. Unfortunately, drop that one three to one. The Bobcats wrap up the regular season slate this weekend, Friday at seven o'clock as they take on Mount Olive. That's a big match. Should the Bobcats win, they will secure the number four seed in the North Division, and that will mean they will be traveling to Erskine on Tuesday. Uh, however, the Bobcats will have senior day on Saturday at 2 p.m. Jordan Banta, Ali Schillinger, and Yaya Kote will be honored prior to the match. Also, the men's cross country team is in action this weekend as they participate in the Southeast Regional at Wingate. So we wish all of our teams the best of luck. And one last note is the women's soccer team wrapped up their season on Saturday as they dominated, uh, excuse me, dominated Erskine five to one as nine seniors were honored prior to that match. So uh, fall's wrapping up. The winter sports are getting going. So please come and check us out. And for any up-to-date schedules, go to lncbobcats.com. Overholt with the ball right in midfield. Passes up to Mahar. This is a great break for Mahar here. Mahar has a great chance. Goes around one defender. Mahar. Passes it. Kicks it in. And that's and a goal, goal for, for the Bobcats. Bobcats. Here as the Bobcats pass around. Overholt all over the field. Mahar has a chance to score. Here we go, Sarah Mahar with a great goal. goal. <laughs> 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 
Bobcats finding the offensive opportunity with overhold oh, there. Kicks it and it's a goal. <laughs> and that was far side of the field. Anki finding Mahar as Mahar rushes for the ball. This is a great offensive opportunity. Hey, Mahar. For Mahar, she yes, has an open the goal shot. And it's a goal. Allen, offensive opportunity, passes across, maybe looking for Mahar or Barcel to move up. This is in front of the goal, it's oh, a great yeah, opportunity, goal! as we saw the goalie. And after the women's soccer's dominating win against Erskine, Justin was able to catch up with Coach Kiko Magana. And welcome back to Lees McRae College Game of the Week. I'm Justin Perillo. I'm here with co head coach Kiko Magana after the Lees McRae women's Bobcat soccer team just won five to one over Erskine Flying Fleet. Coach, it was the last game for you guys. It was also senior day. How do you feel about your team and the seniors that played today? Uh, seniors played great. They were mentally and physically ready to play on uh, their senior night. Uh, it was a lot of emotions, and it was good emotions, and they came out, and uh, from the start to the end, they played fantastic. And not just the score line, but just everything they did on the field was just excellent, and everything just came together. I felt like the seniors really bonded over this game together, maybe just being the last game, or maybe just, you know, they, they knew what uh, they had to do, and they came out and they played really well. Uh, this, this, so this is the last game of the season, but you guys were really close to making the playoffs. Maybe you can explain that for the viewers, just, uh, just how close you guys were. Yeah, uh, we needed to win uh, by three goals and with the shutout. Uh, unfortunately, we accomplished one of the two things, uh, one five to one. We didn't get the shutout, but uh, it was a close game, and the like, seniors deserved every goal and every second of the game. Yeah, like, I mean, it was, you know, that you guys needed the shutout, and if you didn't, it was still a great game, you know. I mean, yeah. just to go out on the last game and to win 5-1, to one, mm -hmm. exciting to watch. Great game from all the seniors there, yeah. especially uh, Mahar and Overholt taking some uh, great goals and yeah. good assists, and we saw uh, just great teamwork all around. What are, what are some of the highlights of the game for you? Uh, just the way they came together, really. The, um, there wasn't one time in the season where all the seniors played at the same time, and I was excited and nervous at the same time, but like I said, they came out, and as soon as the kickoff, I knew we were going to do well. Everything, all we got all the right bounces, uh, communication was great, off-ball movement, and finishing was spectacular, and it was just a great way for them to finish the game and finish their careers at Lee's McRae. It sure was. You looking forward to next season, Coach? Yes and no. You know, <laughs> I, I wish I had the same group of seniors again. Uh, it was, like I said, they were they did great for me this year, buying into my culture and philosophies. But yeah, next year should be a great year for us, just like this one. Hopefully not as close, yeah. but um, everything's going great, and I can't wait for next year. Well, we were glad to see your first season at uh, Lees McRae. Pretty successful, and thank you for joining me tonight. Yeah, thank you. And Justin was able to talk to two seniors who played a big part in the match with Mallory Overholt and Sarah Mahar. And I'm here with seniors Sarah Mahar and Mallory Overholt, who both had great games today, both with two goals on the game, and they had some great stats this whole season. But this was the last game for both of them. Girls, how does it feel being uh, last game as a Bobcat? Mallory? Um, it's sad, but I'm really happy that we ended the way we did. It was a really good game, a lot of good team goals. and. I couldn't be more happy to leave knowing that the team's going to do really well next year. And Sarah, great job today. You had some, uh, we, we had a little thing going as uh, commentators calling a Mahar breakaway <laughs> there. And, uh, offsides too many times. <laughs> maybe offsides a couple times, but how does it feel as a uh, last game as a Bobcat? No, it's definitely bittersweet, I mean, going out like this. But um, I think our seniors did well. The, everyone else that played did so well, and you can't ask for anything more. And so you guys had both great games, but the team played well as, you know, the team played really great all around. What, uh, what, what was some highlights of the game that you really, really stuck out for you today? You know, I really liked Elise's uh, backflip. That was probably <laughs> my favorite moment, not gonna lie. Yeah. Mallory, any, uh, any good points from the game that you really take away from this as your uh, last game, maybe? I mean, I just, I thought it was just a good game. We Overall. moved the ball around and I really liked that Buns or Jessica Buns really stepped up back there. She made some big saves, and that was good. really nice to see. Yes, Jessica Buns coming out second half and making great saves right away. Um, we saw that from the beginning too, as well. So today on Tate Field, Bobcat girls taking a win. Fortunately, the last game, but you know, senior day, exciting day here at Lee's McRae College. And uh, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having hey. us. Once a Bobcat, always a Bobcat. <laughs> hey. Yeah. <laughs> Quote directly from Mallory Overholt. 
And again, thanks for joining me today. Lee's McRae College Game of the Week. We'll be back for more right after this. We'd like to congratulate both Sarah and Mallory and the other seven seniors that concluded their Bobcat career. And we wish them the best of luck as they move forward. And we'll be back shortly with This Week in Bobcat Athletics. Thank you and welcome back to This Week in Bobcat Athletics. I want to wrap up the show by talking a little bit about Senior Day and what it means to me. We watched men's and women's soccer have their special day this past Saturday. We're going to have volleyball this coming Saturday. It's a special time. Uh, you're watching these young people who have spent four years wearing the green and gold, playing their last home game. There's such raw emotion. The family and the friends have come to, to take part and celebrate in this special moment. And from an athletic director's standpoint, I, I just want to continue to say thank you for the support that they have given by uh, Bobcat Nation. I mean, it's, it's really, truly an emotional time as we watch these young people who came here as young freshmen and will leave as wonderful young men and women. And it's a wonderful time. And I, I just think it's a special tribute to them. And I hope you're able to come out and take part in one of our senior days and just see exactly from my lens and my perspective what it's all about. Because I, I do think Bobcat Nation is reaching new lights. Uh, we've got incredible opportunities with enhancements. Uh, the Dunk Mountain Madness, as Chris mentioned, was a great opportunity to kind of see our basketball team. And as the temperatures drop, I want you to come out and see us. It's great, fun, healthy, affordable entertainment. I think we've got a good product. I think you're going to really enjoy it. I want you to bring your family out. I want you to come out and support Bobcat Athletics. You'll see some young men and women that you see in the grocery store, the convenience store, the gas station, and you're going to realize that they are really, truly incredibly talented young people, and they're making a difference on our campus in our town and in our community, our county as well. So I think that it's really important for you to become a part of Bobcat Nation, one way, shape, or form. Time, talents, or treasures, come be a part of it. See what I'm talking about, and you'll really get energized like I am. You'll make you feel young again, I, t I will tell you that. I've enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you come to a game. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to help, but please know Bobcat Nation is thriving, and you're a part of it. Until next week, have a good one. <laughs>